Say hello to Sebastian Dvorak and Malik Mungo. Malik killed Sebastian. I'll let you figure out which one is which. This happened two years ago. We did a big story on it. It was a big deal. The kid had lots of friends. He was a happy-go-lucky young guy. Like a lot of young guys, um, they find a job as a bartender. All of a sudden, they're making good money. Lots and lots of friends. Lots and lots of, well, friends. And uh, that's what they do until they figure out what they really want to do. Anyway, how many stories have we done in Baltimore where a bartender, a customer, a waiter is leaving their little t pub or tavern or club? They get out on the streets and the fellas find them. They're just like little wounded minnows on the ocean when a big old shark comes along. So we know Malik was there when the murder happened. Four people said Malik pulled the trigger. Doesn't really matter to me. Malik and his buddy admitted Malik admitted to, to robbing the guy. But Malik said he tried to stop his, his uh, other fella from shooting him. Yeah, we're supposed to believe that. Now we're supposed to believe Malik is not guilty of this guy's murder. Yeah, there was a hung jury. They're going to try him again. But there's some people on that jury that said Malik is not guilty of murder. Then after the hung jury came in, the story got even a little bit stranger. The trial for the man charged with killing a bartender in Canton two years ago has ended with a mistrial on the most serious charges. Sebastian Dvorak had just celebrated his 27th birthday when he was shot and killed. WMAR 2 News Mark Roper is live at the Baltimore County Courthouse where the suspect in this case, Malik Mungo, was on trial for more than two weeks. And Mark, the jury did find him guilty on several charges but not murder. Yeah, the jury came back with a verdict on the lesser charges, but didn't agree on the murder charges. So it was unsettling for the families on both sides of this case. And the case was tried here in Baltimore County because Mungo faced gang charges that cross city and county lines. And Maryland state law allows for the jurisdiction of that trial to be held in any one of those. So the family of Sebastian Dvork now walks away from the trial disappointed that no one has been convicted for his murder. 19-year-old Malik Mungo faced 19 charges in court. Mungo testified he wasn't the one who robbed and shot Dvork two years ago, that it was someone else he only knew by a nickname. And the jury couldn't agree on whether to believe his testimony, and so there was no verdict on the first and second degree murder charges, as well as the robbery and gang charges. Mungo was found not guilty on three counts of burglary, and the only charges the jury found Mungo guilty of are related to possessing a firearm and possession of a fake substance masquerading as a drug. And my son, Sebastian Dvorak, who I'm so proud of, um, was walking home from his birthday and was viciously attacked by two people for a wallet with no money, a switch, and a phone. He handed over the phone and was shot. And his, the testimony in court was from my son's, my son's own words, why in the heck did you, hell did you do that? He fell on the ground the perpetrators ran away, left them there to die, bleeding in the streets of Baltimore. The jury viewed surveillance video from the night of the murder, which prosecutors say placed Mungo at the scene. Four witnesses testified Mungo pulled the trigger, but Mungo says someone else did it. Someone he tried to talk out of it. Mungo was found guilty on eight other counts, like drugs and firearms charges. Those are charges his attorney says he admitted to on the stand, testifying in his own defense. He was found not guilty on three burglary charges. So during the trial, we found that Malik, they said, was a victim of some pretty nasty child abuse as a child. He was in foster parents for a while. It came out of the foster system, a hardened killer. Yeah, criminal, and he was in the middle of a criminal activity. He was in the middle of a criminal gang, which hung out near Johns Hopkins University. Yeah, you know, that neighborhood where all the people in the neighborhood got together said they didn't want the university to have their own cops because cops were always picking on black people for no reason whatsoever. And all the TV stations went out there and dutifully reported that cops are very mean to the black people who live near Johns Hopkins University because, well, the cops are always expecting them to break the law and not going around killing people. 
to pay our communities for decades here. More than 100 protesters. Real power is in the streets. Real power is in occupation. Real power is in what we're seeing right now. Voice their opposition to a private armed police force at Johns Hopkins University. More police officers, more guns around our community isn't actually going to stop crime, certainly not going to stop violent crime. For some, the issue is fear of being racially profiled. For me and for every other black student at Hopkins and for every single black community member, I want them to come home at night. I don't want them to be terrorized by a police officer. Laura Laughlin is a guidance counselor at Excel Academy, an alternative school in West Baltimore, who is also against the idea. I'm a white lady, but I work with black young men and being in, you know, just being themselves on the street every day uh, can get stopped by police. And off, more often than not, the fellas out there are disappointing the cops. Anyway, at some, at some point during the trial uh, that, that where the killer would get off, at least temporarily, at some point during the trial, his friends and parents decided to set up a foundation. The foundation is supposed to help at-risk youths in Baltimore, and it's supposed to bring people together in Baltimore, Baltimore City. Uh, so this is a foundation to help little black children in Baltimore City, so we can get them early enough. If we give them, an, if we give them a special quantity of free stuff, free stuff they're not getting already. Okay, this is going to come perilously close to blaming the going around some killing twenty-seven-year-old white kids with so lots Sebastian of friends and Dvorak. nice parents. Please, he sir. had lots of friends who really oh, loved him. More. He loved them. He also loved something called the city of Baltimore. He loved this dream he had of Baltimore, of, of old houses, charming places, where young white kids could walk the streets and go to nice clubs and have a lot of fun and you know say hello to the fellows once in a while. He was down with the cause, and the cause was down with him, wasn't it? Well, no, it wasn't. And Sebastian paid a price. For his fantasy vision of Baltimore as a clean, charming, safe place, when all the rest of us know it's a nasty, dirty, dark, and dangerous place where white lives are cheap. And the stated goal of the mayor, the chief of police, and members of the city council is to stop arresting so many black people because arresting a black person for a crime causes the crime. Get it? Why well, don't? I hope I never do. Even if that makes the black kids angry.